Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're doing another dive into Malware Bazaar, looking at a sample we find. Um, it, today it's a Excel document that has an equation, a, a really old 2017 equation editor vulnerability. Um, that just is the same vulnerability still shows up over and over again in Malware Bazaar, and so I thought it might be interesting to take a look. Um, I'm used to seeing this back in the day uh, in the form of a um, RTF file that gets opened with Word. Um, so it's a little bit interesting to see it in a true OLE document. I'm kind of curious to poke around at that a little bit and see where it goes. Um, but uh, yeah, this I was working in a SOC when this came out, and this was everywhere because it was an unauthenticated. You know, you just if you if you get someone to open a document, you get execution. And so there's no enable macros. There's no other things like that. It just it just was. So um, we will, looking into the future, we're going to find um, the shell code. We're going to run the shell code and see, get a uh, .NET executable out of it. We will analyze that executable and figure out the next stage that it downloads, um, which ends up being an obfuscated, slightly uh, DLL. And we'll take a quick look at that DLL. We're not going to go too deep into it, but we get a, a quick idea of what it's going to do. So um, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's take a look at this sample here. We're in Malware Bazaar. Um, I was scrolling through, and uh, again, I've been seeing these CVE 2017 11882s all the time, and so I kind of want to take a look at one. Um, I remember these being in Word docs and RTFs, RTF files, really, that would open in Word. Um, so this one being in Excel is interesting to me. I thought we might take a look at it. Um, let's see. We can also check, uh, let's see, if we go to this, if we open up this tag here. And see, so like this is an old CV, right? But it's still showing up. It's getting submitted often 20 times a day, um, going back all into January. And it goes back further than that. It's been fairly solid at being used. So there must be unpatched versions out there that people are trying to take advantage of. Um, so I'm less, like I said, I'm less familiar taking a look at this in like an office OLE format, but let's, um, we're gonna take a look. So let's download the sample here. Um, we'll get a copy, got it over here and we can move from downloads uh, that looks good to here seven zip extract this password infected and here we go so if we do file on this dot xls we've got a office document it's an ole document so for that we will use um the dda stevens tool uh ole dump so we can run that on this and I should probably just delete the zip so we don't see it. Um, there's a bunch of different OLE streams in here. Um, the one that jumps out as immediately interesting is this one right here is this OLE native, especially since like they're trying to, they clearly they're trying to pass um, this OLE native by some Yara rules or something because it's like spelled all funky and camel cased. Um, in fact, before we go any deeper, let's take a look at the Yara rule that caught this. Um, if we go back, or go that flag this, if we go back here, we can see at the bottom. So here's a YAR rule right here. Um, we can click on it and see examples of it. Um, but I don't know a great way in Malware Bazaar, someone could tell me if you do, to get actually see the, the alert, the rule itself. Uh, but lucky for us, if we just Google this title, um, the next thing down is an interesting case of this. Let's go down. Um, so you can see right here, here they have OLE native spelled with different casing. Here they have it with um, a different one with uh, kind of similar but different camel casing. Um, CVE. Let's see. Okay, so here we go. Here's our rule indicator, and so we're looking for this. This first one, doc file, is what a Office document. Um, this one right here is. Oh, here we go. Okay, and it contains the CSCLS ID, which is like an identifier, um, a unique identifier for the Microsoft Equation Editor 3.0. So that's what this is, and that's why we can say like this is probably the Equation Editor Vuln. Um, even though we're not going to necessarily see that in the uh, font. And so then there's old OLE native, 10 native, and no case. That's how we're going to catch that. Um, and I don't know exactly what the root wide entry is, but that's that's sort of what we're looking at here. So um, I don't know exactly where the OLE native, or the um, that CLS ID comes in. We can look at, um, if we look at the whole document in XXD, uh, into unless. Um, and let's see, what was that thing called? Um, so let's see, uh, it's 0202CE, let's, let's look for C, control CE, so right here, the first one. So here's 02CE02, 
O2, CE, O2, a bunch of zeros, and eventually a C0, and then a 4, 6, a bunch later. So there's the C0, and there's the 4, 6. So this right here is our CLSID for the equation editor. Um, so we've, that's what we're hitting on. Um, let's take a look now. We can use OLE dump. I started to say this earlier. This is a DDA Stevens tool. Um, on, in fact, before I do that, I'm going to remove to a zip because I don't need it. And now I can do OLE dump on 2a like that. And we get all these things. So we are interested in taking a look at this OLE native one. So that's stream 34. So we're going to come up here and we will do uh, minus s34 to take a look. And let's just type this into less to take a peek at it. Um, and this is just nothing. I mean, this isn't meaningful to me, but this is actually shellcode. And this is what's going to run. And we can get this um, and actually extract it into, we'll call it like sc.bin. Um, and then I don't know, let's so we'll jump over to a Windows machine here and we'll open this up. And I've got, I keep this map so the share, the drives are shared. So we can go to 2023-0227, here we go. And there's our sc.bin. So we can do scdbg, which is like our shellcode debugger. What it's gonna do is it's gonna run the shellcode, but when it gets to any system calls, it's just going to report that it did them and then stop, but not actually do them. Um, so it's kind of a safe way to do that. So we'll give it the dash F file sc.bin. Um, I'm going to give it fine shell code and I want to print a report. So I'm going to give it like that and it runs and you know what? That didn't work. Let's see. Did we mess something up here? Um, let's go back here and check this out. Um, oh, we didn't. So we, I'm, uh, sc.bin is probably our, it's probably our hex. Yep. Okay. So we need to uh, come up here and before we save this to a file, we need to do dash D for dump. Now, if we do file sc.bin, it's just data. If we do less sc.bin, it's binary. It's going to be a mess. Yeah, so that's, that's what we wanted. Okay, take two. Let's go over here, back to Windows, and try this one more time. And so what it really quickly finds, three different offsets where it's these um, potential shell code. So at OXA8, 139, and AC, um, we will pick one of them and see if it works. And if it doesn't, we'll try the next one. Um, and so we can scroll up here. We can see that it starts, let's see, so it starts running this, um, does some jumps. Uh, eventually there's a git proc address call. There's an expand environment strings public vbc.exe. So that's gonna get the public directory, load library URL mon, uh, git proc address of URL download to file. And so boom, here we go. We have URL download to file from this thing here. We're gonna load library w shell 32. We're gonna call git shell execute w. And then that gets called as well, presumably running this thing. Um, so we got stage two. Uh, let's copy this. We'll go back to Linux and we will w get and see if it's still there. And it looks like it is. Um, if we do a file on 768, um, we have a nice 32 bit uh, mono.net assembly. All right, so we'll jump over to our Windows VM again and we will open up VN Spy. Of the x86 version, I believe that's what it was. Um, and we will grab, so we come here, go to my Y drive. Uh, see, where's my 20? Uh, there we go. And we have 780.exe. Let's drop it in here. Got a totally different name. I wonder if I can make this FX font bigger. I don't see a way to. Um, view. Okay, well, we're going to go with it for here. So there's, um, you can open this up. There's a few, there's three kind of cloud namespaces here. You can open all of them up. There's main right there. So we'll probably start that. Um, so if you look in main over here, it just calls this uh, function right here. Now this is calling one long thing. Let's start with this ubris.drr. And here we have our call to 85, another IP downloading a DLL. And it's downloading a DLL, then it's reversing the bytes. Um, and it's saving it as result, which is then getting pushed back. Uh, result is getting loaded into this current domain thing. Oops, that's not where we want it to be. That looks like a standard active thing. Um, and then it's getting passed to this. And we can see here, this is calling uh, stop. Um, and it's going to invoke invocation. It's going to be running something from there. So we're gonna get a DLL, we're gonna run some stuff. 
I wonder if we might want to keep an eye on this for um, if it's an entry point. So let's see if we can grab that DLL. Um, so two plus, see here, here, grab you. Go back into Linux here and do a W get there. Still alive, it's good. Um, if we do a file on NL that, it's just data. Um, if we cat NL there into XXD and we put it into TAC, which will take all the lines and reverse their order. Um, so we get the last line first. We can see, so here's the last, so you can see it's going, it's climbing up in memory space now. And the reason I do that is it reversed all the bytes. And so what we want to see is like, does it start with MZ? And in fact, it does the last, you know, the last, Last line as MZ blah blah blah. So and here's you know this program cannot be run in DS. Also MS DOS mode. So we got that there. Um, it's a good way to return this around. Um, I mean I'm just going to use it. This is there's probably a better way to do this, but I will just do with open DLL as read binary as f malware equals f dot read. And we'll do with open uh, like rev n l a k da dot d o l write binary as f f dot write malware and then we'll just reverse the bytes with that and now we've we're done so if we do a file on rev navla we have another dot net assembly so we're doing we're making some progress here um, since it's dot net we can jump back over to Windows made a mess of my camera here. Um, we'll close all of these, shrink all of these, and then we can grab here from F5 this and grab our next DLL here. Um, I did want to see, let's see, let's grab, let's go back over here real quick. We have main that, we have this, which is calling it. So we want BWJ, so we can see that, really small over here, but you can see that is the name of this executable. Um, then it's going to call, presumably, AV, ADV. Do we have one of those? Hmm. I don't see one of those. So we might, might, might have a little bit more to do here. Um, what about GDDPZ? Is that something? No, not immediately obvious. So we'd have to go through all of this. Um, we're probably getting outside the scope of as deep as I wanted to go here. Um, oh, we, did we just find it? ADV. Oh, here it is. B, nice. It's the B. It's the namespace here, followed by this. Let's take one more little peek here. Uh, here is the function that's going to get called, and um, this is some awesome looking uh, stuff here. Um, definitely looks obfuscated as can be. Um, so I'm not going to dive into much more analysis here. This is probably some sort of um, state machine here that's going to be an endless for loop where it's looping through doing different things based on responses coming back. So here we're getting, you can see we're getting the environment special folder. Um, so there's, probably, there's some file system there. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that's not, that's obfuscated. So uh, we're going to not go too far down that rabbit hole. Um, one thing we can do here is we can come to like virus, virus total. Oh, internet in this machine. Hold on. Go back to Linux and we'll come over here and we'll do virus total. And let's grab the hash of that uh, new file. So md5 sum on rev map a lot of that DLL. Grab this. Uh, no matches. Interesting. So this hasn't been uploaded yet. In fact, let's, let's, we can go ahead and upload it. Um, it takes a while for it to actually run through, but we can um, malware. There we go. We will upload this right now. And uh, probably not going to sit here and make you watch it while we run it through, but uh, already we're quickly getting some uh, Trojan. Let's see any namespaces here. Nothing. Nothing named yet. Cryptic, missile, static. So, um, but anyway, it's it's not good. So, 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one here. Um, I thought this was kind of fun. We got to dig through an equation or editor vul um, vulnerability in a Excel sheet. Uh, we looked at the shell code. We used SCS SC debug to run the shell code, get what it was downloading, um, which was a simple .NET, .NET executable. Uh, we could see it ran that, so we looked at it, um, and that thing was simply just another downloader that downloaded a DLL but backwards, um, which actually will get by a lot of you know YAR rules and stuff that look for you know this cannot be run in MS DOS mode or MZ. Um, those they were there, they're just in reverse, and so it then reversed them and ran that, um, and that looked like a complicated kind of well true loop that was running and probably you know connect uh, connecting back to the to uh, some sort of C two getting commands sending data, et cetera. So um, that last part we don't totally know. We're just kind of guessing based on what we expect. Um, so I'm going to call it there. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll talk to you next time.